Nuclear power is a topic that heats up tempers. While Germany has phased out nuclear power, other countries are increasingly relying on nuclear energy. Now, the world's first commercial pebble bed reactor has been connected to the grid in China, and that is an absolute energy revolution. Sure, stay tuned. To learn all about this reactor and how it will change the world of energy production, welcome everyone. The only topic that's even more controversial than nuclear power is my beard. And yes, I shaved. <laughs> I'm not quite convinced myself. Leave a comment telling me which you prefer, Tim with a beard or Tim shaven. I'm very curious to hear your opinions. But now, from facial hair to nuclear reactors, China has launched a new reactor called a pebble bed reactor. This is somewhat reminiscent of the pebble beds that we discover in distant galaxies. But to understand how a pebble bed reactor works, we first need to take a look at how conventional nuclear power plants operate. It's actually easier than you think. In these power plants, the nuclear fuel is in the form of uranium rods in a water-filled pressure vessel. Nuclear fission generates heat that boils the water. The resulting steam then drives turbines, which in turn generate electricity. So far, so simple. Of course, it's all a bit more complicated in reality. But today, we want to focus on a different reactor. With the pebble bed reactor, things look a bit different. Instead of fuel rods, graphite pebbles the size of a tennis ball are used here. Each of these pebbles contains thousands of tiny uranium particles surrounded by several protective layers. Like a little arancino, it's filled with delicious tiny grains of rice that are wrapped in a crispy layer. I should pick some other comparisons, but arancini are just so delicious. Okay, back to the topic. These balls in the reactor in China are a whopping 420,000 pieces, are filled into a container, Helium gas then flows through it from above, heating up to over 700 degrees. This hot gas is then used to generate steam. And now it gets exciting because the protective layer of the balls is specially constructed. They are encased in several layers. First comes a porous carbon layer that can absorb the resulting gases. This is followed by a dense pyrocarbon layer, then a silicon carbide layer, and finally another carbon layer. This concept is called trisoparticles, which stands for tristructural isotropic. It is meant to prevent the release of radioactive fission products. The concept is not that new. Its origins go back to developments in Germany in the 1960s. The first experimental reactor was built at the Ulick Research Center at that time. A larger prototype followed in Ham Wentrop later on. But after a few technical problems and the Chernobyl disaster, the projects were abandoned. And nowadays, the topic of nuclear energy in Germany is no longer an issue anyway. What do you think? Is nuclear energy a curse or a blessing? What's really special about this concept is that the fuel pellets can be replaced during operation. They slowly move from the top down through the reactor and are taken out at the bottom. Spent pellets are sorted out. The rest is fed back in from the top. This way, the reactor can theoretically run endlessly without having to shut it down for a fuel change. Pretty clever. Wouldn't it be cool if that worked with humans too? Just imagine, you could just stuff Arancini into me from the top and I'd never have to sleep. That would be revolutionary. So that was the last Arancini joke, I promise. Now you're probably wondering if the idea is so great. Why aren't we using it already? It is located in Shandong province and has an electrical output of 200 megawatts. By way of comparison, a modern coal-fired power plant can produce 1,000 megawatts or more. So as you can see, the Chinese reactor is actually more of a small model. However, larger plants are already in the planning stage. Nevertheless, the facility is truly impressive. It consists of two reactor modules that jointly drive a turbine. Each module has a separate reactor vessel and a steam generator. This means that the helium from the reactors is used in the steam generators to evaporate water. The steam generated in this way then drives the common turbine. This modular design should make it possible in the future to assemble larger power plants from standardized individual parts. But what makes this type of reactor so special? A key point is the so-called inherent safety. This means that the reactor is designed to shut down by itself in an emergency, without the need for active safety systems. The graphite spheres are designed to remain stable up to 1600 degrees. As the temperature rises, however, the chain reaction automatically slows down. The reactor cannot heat up uncontrollably. And to demonstrate this property, the operators in China recently conducted a truly spectacular test. They simply switched off the cooling systems. In a conventional reactor, that would be a good way to a catastrophic failure. So don't try this at home, folks. In China, the pebble bed reactor autonomously reduced its power as planned. The temperature did rise to 830 degrees at first, but then it decreased on its own. An impressive proof of the safety concept. 
But before we get too euphoric, this type of reactor is not without risk either. Although an uncontrolled core meltdown is practically impossible, problems can still arise if water or air enters the reactor. Furthermore, the pebble bed reactor also produces radioactive waste that has to be disposed of, so the safety issues have not yet been definitively resolved. A quick interjection from me. I would be really happy if you subscribe to the channel now. Every subscription helps me a lot and you will never miss one of my galactic videos again. In addition to its inherent safety, one advantage of this reactor is said to be its efficiency. The high operating temperatures increase the efficiency of electricity generation. In addition, the waste heat can be used for industrial processes such as hydrogen production. That sounds great at first, but there is a catch. To ensure safety, the power density in the reactor must be kept relatively low. So, less energy is produced per volume than in conventional power plants. An interesting aspect is also the flexibility of the reactor. The power output can be adjusted relatively easily by continuously reloading the fuel. This makes the pebble bed reactor potentially well suited for load following operation, i.e. adjusting electricity production to current demand. In times of fluctuating feed-in from renewable energies, this could be an essential advantage. Now let's move on to another exciting aspect, the fuel. In pebble bed reactors, thorium can be used alongside uranium. Many of you might still remember from World of Warcraft. Those were good times, but I can never reactivate my account, otherwise I'll completely get sucked back into the PC. Thorium is a radioactive element that occurs about three times more frequently in the Earth's crust than uranium. Some experts see it as the nuclear fuel of the future. The advantage? The fission of thorium produces less long-lived radioactive waste. In addition, thorium is more difficult to misuse for nuclear weapons. Sounds promising, doesn't it? However, thorium technology is still in its infancy, so for the time being, the reactor in China will continue to use conventional uranium as fuel. It will be a few years before we might see thorium reactors on a large scale. So what's next for ball pile technology? China is already planning to build larger reactors with a capacity of 600 megawatts. Power. Other countries such as Indonesia and Saudi Arabia are also showing interest. Whether this type of reactor will catch on worldwide remains to be seen. In the end, cost will be the deciding factor. At present, construction is still more expensive than for conventional nuclear power plants. However, this could change once the technology is fully developed and mass produced. One important point, which I have already mentioned, is the disposal of spent fuel elements. The graphite balls have the advantage that they are very stable and effectively contain radioactivity. However, this also poses a challenge for final disposal. This is because graphite is difficult to compress and can be combustible under certain conditions. So there is still a lot of research and development work to be done here to find a safe and efficient method of disposal. In Germany, there will likely be no renaissance of ball pile reactors for the foreseeable future. With the phase out of nuclear power, a clear decision has been made against the use of nuclear energy. What's interesting is that a technology originally from Germany is now being further developed in China. It reminds me a bit of the Transrapid. Developed in Germany, now in use in China. So we're doing something wrong. But okay, what remains as a conclusion? The technology does offer some promising approaches, especially in the area of safety. Whether it will really bring the hoped-for revolution in nuclear energy remains to be seen. In any case, it is an exciting field of research that we should continue to keep an eye on. And now let's stick to the topic of travel, but to the moon? NASA has found a gigantic radioactive structure inside the moon. It reminds me of the movie Moonfall, if you have seen it. You can find out more about this exciting discovery and watch the original footage in the video in the top right hand corner. Be sure to click on it and if you click in the bottom right hand corner you will find as always another exciting topic related to space and science. Otherwise I'll see you in the next video. Take care folks.